Welcome back to CTF365. My name is Chris, and in this video, we're going to work with Metasploitable to learn how to locate and crack password hashes stored in a MySQL database. To complete this tutorial, first you need to gain root access to the Metasploitable server, and this is something that I showed you how to do in a previous Metasploitable tutorial called How to Exploit a Misconfigured NFS Server. So if you haven't already completed that tutorial, I'll place a link in the description for you. Simply head over there, follow the tutorial to gain root access, then come back and we'll get started. Now moving on with the tutorial, the first thing that we need to do is we need to log into the Metasploitable server. So go ahead and open up a terminal. Then in the terminal, we're going to type ssh space root at 10.195.2.2 and then press enter. And if you use the method that I taught you in the previous tutorial, you won't be prompted to enter a password because instead we're using our private SSH key to authenticate. So now that we're logged in as root, we're going to access MySQL. And to do that, we're going to type MySQL and then press enter. And you should have the MySQL prompt like I do. Now we're going to tell MySQL to list all of its databases. And to do this, we're going to type show space databases semicolon and then press enter and a list of databases should be produced as you're seeing here now if we wanted to we could explore each database individually until we find something that sparks our interest but instead we're going to simulate that process and move directly into the dvwa database and to do that we're going to type use space dvwa semicolon and then press enter and now we're going to tell MySQL to list all of the tables in the DVWA database. So let's type show space tables, semicolon, and then press enter. And as you can see here, the DVWA database contains two tables, guestbook and users. From here, we could look at the contents of each table on a one by one basis, but instead we're going to overlook the guestbook table and inspect the contents of the users table. To display the data stored in the users table, we're going to type select space asterisk space from space users semicolon and then press enter. And here we're seeing a total of six columns, two of which are user and password. And I think it's fair to assume that the user column contains a list of usernames and the password column contains a list of passwords but you'll notice that the passwords are made up of 32 alphanumeric characters ranging from 0 through 9 and A through F. This is indicative of an MD5 hash. However, those signs are not conclusive. It's actually very difficult to profile hashes, and unfortunately, cryptography is far too complex of a subject to cover here. So a quick tip, when you're working with hashes in the future, it's helpful to use Google and other online resources to help identify the type of hash that you're dealing with. For now, you'll just have to take my word that it's an MD5 hash. So what we're going to do with these hashes is we're going to place them into a plain text file and then we're going to load that text file into a password cracking utility called John the Ripper. What John the Ripper will do is it'll attempt to decrypt the password hashes and return them to us in plain text. So let's go ahead and open a blank text file. And what we're going to do here is we're going to place each username and hash pair on a separate line and we'll also separate the username and hash with a colon. So the way that I like to do this is I like to enter all of the usernames first, then I'll copy each hash and paste it in. So follow along here. We can refer back to the terminal real quick and you can get an idea of what each username is and then I'm going to simply type them in. The first username is admin. And again, we're going to place a colon after the username to separate it from the hash. So we'll add that colon now. Then we'll move down to the next line and we'll enter the next username, which is Gordon B. And then again, a colon. And then move down a line. And the next username is 1337. And then a colon. Move down a line. Pablo, colon. Move down a line. And the last username is Smithy. And then colon. Now we can move back into the database and we'll copy each hash and paste it next to the corresponding username. And I'll skip to the point at which I'm finished doing this. Okay, when you're finished copying and pasting those password hashes into the text file, your text file should look identical to mine. Now we need to save the file, so go ahead and select Save As. And we'll name the file 
hashes.txt. And we're going to set the save location as our desktop. And then click save. And we can go ahead and close that text file now. And finally, it's time to crack the hashes. So let's open up a new terminal. And in the new terminal, we're going to type John space tac tac format equals raw tac md5 in all uppercase space. And then we're going to specify the location of our hashes.txt file, which is forward slash root forward slash desktop with an uppercase D forward slash hashes dot txt and then press enter. Okay, and you can see there that each hash has been decrypted and provided to us as a plain text password. And because the passwords lack complexity, John the Ripper was able to crack them very quickly. Now to conclude this tutorial, I want to highlight a couple of ways that this attack could have been prevented. First and foremost, outdated hashing algorithms with well-known weaknesses like MD5 should not be used to encrypt passwords or any other sensitive user information. Developers should implement newer, more secure standards. Also, if you remember, we were able to log into MySQL without authenticating first. MySQL database administrators should, at the very minimum, enable password authentication. This way, even if an attacker were to breach the main server, he or she would still have to authenticate to the MySQL server. Ultimately, the fundamental lesson is this. Use strong passwords, multiple layers of authentication, smart configurations, and secure encryption algorithms. Also, it wouldn't hurt to use IDS and other similar security mechanisms. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please visit our blog at blog.ctf365.com.